Welcome back to our lessons on stoichiometry. Next, we are going to cover limiting reactants. A limiting reactant in a reaction is a reactant that gets used up, or we say depleted, first. When it gets used up, it ends up limiting the amount of product that's formed because the reaction stops when the reactant is gone. Recall several labs that we've had in which we had a limiting reactant. For instance, in our last reactions lab, the combustion of ethyl alcohol stopped when all the alcohol was used up, even though plenty of oxygen remained. If you think back, we had some reactions early in the year where the copper metal was precipitated when aluminum foil was put into copper chloride solution. And depending on if the copper chloride got used up first, then uh, the aluminum was in excess and aluminum foil was left over, or if the aluminum foil got used up first, then some of the copper chloride was left over as well. The opposite of the re limiting reactant is the excess reactant, and that's what's left over when the reaction stops. And there are many reasons why you might want to have an excess reactant. For instance, you'd want to have an expensive reactant get used up, so other reactants that go along with an expensive reactant might be in excess. Now let's take a look at how limiting reactants work. In order to identify the limiting reactant, you've got to follow a process. So let's look at the process for the reaction of nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gas forming two ammonia. If you end up with one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen in your reactant mixture, then both of them are going to get used up equally and neither one will be limiting. Or if your ratio is anywhere um, that gives you a one to three ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen. However, if the mole ratios are different, then what we're gonna need to do is compare our given mole ratio to the stoichiometric ratio from the balanced chemical equation. For example, suppose we're given one mole of nitrogen, so here's one mole of nitrogen gas, and two moles of hydrogen gas. We're not in our stoichiometric one to three ratio. How are we gonna determine which one is which? Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to compare our ratios of two moles of nitrogen, of hydrogen, I'm sorry, to one mole of nitrogen. That's an actual ratio of two to one. What we needed for our stoichiometric ratio is three to one. Now, since the actual ratio is less than the stoichiometric ratio, what that means is that there is not enough hydrogen. Hydrogen, in this case, is too low. This should be a three, and instead it's a two. So there's not enough hydrogen to react with all of the nitrogen gas. And so we conclude that since hydrogen gets used up first, it is going to be the limiting reactant. Let's try a slightly harder problem, one in which we don't have uh, integer numbers of moles to look at. Suppose we have 2.3 moles of nitrogen and 7.6 moles of hydrogen using the same reaction as before. So which one is the limiting reactant? Let's do our calculations. Again, we're gonna put the hydrogen up on top. It's just easier to have the, the, the reactant with larger coefficient up on top. You could do it either way around. It should come out just fine. Now we have a ratio of 3.3 moles of hydrogen to every mole of nitrogen. You can think of this as a ratio of moles of hydrogen to moles of nitrogen if we divided that by one. All right, let's take a look at our actual ratio is three to one. In this case now, our actual ratio is higher. 3.3 is higher than three to one. What that means now is that we have enough hydrogen gas and it's our nitrogen gas that is going to be limiting. So whenever you have an, a ratio that's greater than your stoichiometric ratio, whatever is on top is in excess, whatever is on bottom is limiting. And as we saw previously, if you have a ratio that's less than whatever is on top is limiting and whatever is on bottom is in excess. All right, so let's keep going. As we did before, we're not going to be seeing mole-to-mole uh, -mole problems all that often, so instead what we're going to do is look at some mass-to-mass -mass problems. So for that same reaction, nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, 
How are we going to determine the limiting reactant if there are 20 grams of nitrogen and 10 grams of hydrogen? Well, as you may have guessed, we're going to have to determine the number of moles of each of the reactant first. So let's go back to our mole road and chapter 11. And remember that if we have 10 grams of hydrogen and we multiply that by one mole of hydrogen over 2.016 grams of hydrogen, the molar mass, the grams cancel out and leave us with 4.96 moles of hydrogen. Let's keep going. 20 grams of nitrogen we cancel with 28.02 grams of nitrogen, and that leaves us with 0.714 moles of nitrogen. All right, now this ratio is not easy to look at uh, without comparing it, so let's take the ratio. The actual ratio, moles of hydrogen to moles of nitrogen is 6.95. Recall that our actual stoichiometric ratio, sorry, is 3 to 1, which means that there's plenty of hydrogen gas and our nitrogen gas now is the limiting reactant, as we saw before. Are you ready to try it on your own? All right, so now you're going to try this on your own. For the reaction, we have four iron 2 sulfides and seven oxygen gas are producing two iron three um, oxides and four sulfur dioxides. By the way, what kind of a reaction does this look like? Uh, what is the limiting reactant if we have 84.9 grams of the iron two sulfide reacting with 64.9 grams of oxygen? As before, we're going to pause the video and then you can do some calculations and Start the video up when you're finished with the calculations. All right, so you're done with the calculations, hopefully. Now let's take a look at how we go through with this. First thing we want to do is let's find out how many moles of iron 2 sulfide we have. So iron 2 sulfide, 84.9 grams times 1 mole over 90.62 grams of iron sulfide. The grams cancel out and leave us with 0.941 moles of iron to sulfide. Next, let's look at our oxygen. We had 64.9 grams of oxygen. The molar mass is 32.00 grams. The molar mass cancels. The grams cancel with the grams and leaves us with 2.03 moles of oxygen. All right, now, we wanted to compare the mole ratios. I will pause the video again here in case you didn't calculate those. Go back and calculate, or if you got them wrong, calculate the mole ratios now. All right, now you've calculated the mole ratios. Let's take a look at the actual ratio. We're going to put the oxygen on top because it had the higher coefficient. So 2.03 moles of oxygen over 0.941 moles of iron 2 sulfide gives us 0.216 as the ratio. When we calculate our stoichiometric ratio, 7 to 4 is a stoichiometric ratio of 1.75, which means we have more than enough oxygen, and the iron 2 sulfide is the limiting reactant. Did you get that? All right, hopefully you did. If you wanted to get a little bit more uh, practice at this, um, you can go and read the book. But before you do, I recommend that you go on to the next video, the amount of excess reactant and amount of product. So we can practice this a, a little bit more. We will practice this, and we will also look at excess reactants and amount of product.